What's up everybody? Blue Gabe, today is the day I've been waiting for for a long time. But before I can tell you what that is, why I've been waiting on this day for a long time, I gotta give a huge shout out to Helix Sleeps for sponsoring this video. Now, if you're wondering why I'm so excited and what in the heck today is the day means, if you follow along very much, you know that a couple months back, I was down in the Keys with Joe VT fishing on my new 31 contender. Well, it's not new, it's a 2008, but it's new for me. I've only had it for less than a year. And when I bought that boat, it was called turnkey, meaning all you gotta do is buy this boat and go fishing. Everything works great. Well, let me tell you something. It couldn't have been any farther from the truth. Literally every single thing on this boat, electronically, the bait well pumps, the bilge pumps, the radar, the autopilot, everything on it has broke. Everything, literally. Even my lower units went out on my motors. So I eventually got rid of the 350s and got new 300s. I got new radar, I got new autopilot, I got a new GPS, I got new bilge pumps, I got all new rewiring job. Yep, forgot about that, that was an expensive one. Rewired the whole entire boat. And then, once I thought I had it all done, we were all good. Joey and I loaded the boat, and we went to the Keys, put 320 gallons of gas in the boat, just to realize that we had a hole in the tank. As soon as we got out there fishing, heck, as soon as we put the boat in the water, we started smelling raw fuel, which is never good. You do not want raw fuel in the bilge of your boat. It could cause a bad explosion. Well, guess what? We had raw fuel in the bilge, but I had so much money invested in that trip and so much money invested in the boat, and the only way I make money is making YouTube videos for y'all to watch, that we stayed down and we fished for two days. All we smelled was gas the entire time. It was miserable. So I come home, found somebody reputable that could probably fix it, Treasure Coast Customs, took the boat to him, give him a $13,000 deposit, and he started tearing the boat apart to get to the fuel tanks. He found the problem, removed the fuel tanks, got new fuel tanks, and he's putting them in today, and that's what I'm so excited about. We're that much closer to getting to go back fishing again with my contender. After this, Unless the fiberglass in the boat breaks, there's literally nothing else to break. So I bought the boat for 169,000 and I have spent at least 50 to $60,000 fixing it. So I have way more money in the boat than the boat's actually worth. But today is a good day because I get to go fishing soon on it. I'm gonna put all this negativity behind me and just focus on there's a brighter future. So now that I got all that venting out of the way, let me tell you a little bit more about Helix Sleeps. Now, if you're like me and you struggle with sleep, I'm 42 years old, got neck, back, knee problems, pretty much everything hurts when I wake up in the morning. But that was before I found Helix. Once I found Helix and I took the online sleep quiz, which was super easy and convenient, you literally go through everything that you like in a mattress and they figure out which one best fits you and ship it straight to your door. They match me perfectly with the Helix Midnight Lux. So I've had mine for about a year now and I can tell you it has changed the game in my sleeping habits. I sleep longer, I sleep more comfortably, I wake up in a better mood. And if you know what I do for a living, you know sleep's important. Because most of the time when the kids get home from school, I gotta feed them dinner, get them ready for bed. And I don't get to start editing until they go to bed. And I might edit till 2 a.m. So that. 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. better be some good sleep. I think one of the coolest parts about buying a mattress from Helix Sleeps is how it comes to your house. You don't have to go pick it up. They ship it right to your door and it comes vacuum sealed in a little box. When it gets there, you're gonna think, how the heck is my mattress in that box? Well, it is. That's the best part. You don't have to go to any of these mattress stores and figure out how to get it back to your house because it's so big and bulky. Now, I love my Helix mattress. There's no doubt about it. And I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleeps. I'll have a link in the description below this video, or you can just head to helixsleep.com slash bluegabe, where you'll get 20% off and two free pillows. See that? While y'all were thinking about mattresses, I done slid into Bass Pro Shops and picked up Luke and Jake's new turkey gun because it's right next door to Treasure Coast Customs. That was a pretty slick maneuver I just pulled, wasn't it? I got their new 410. This thing is rank, a 410. I grew up turkey hunting with a 20 gauge and a 12 gauge and a bow. Shot this little Stevenson. 
I'll never go back. That's all I'll ever turkey hunt with from here on out is a 410. It is deadly. Now we can go check out the boat. I'm excited to see it. It's gonna look totally different than it looked when I dropped it off. And just like that, we're here. Treasure Coast Customs. Come on, let's show them this bad boy. Let's show them the damage. This obviously is not mine, but it's having the same sort of work done to it. It's so sad to see my baby in this, this condition. No, we're making her better though. That's my T-top up there. That's supposed to be in the boat, but unfortunately isn't. I should do like a drum roll right now. Oh my goodness. This is not how it looked just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so basically, the um, point that we're at now is we've got the tanks uh, set in their coffins. We've got them zinc coated. They're ready to be waterproofed on the edges. Um, generally this happens you know, from water intrusion, uh, more or less. So this particular case, the tank had been uh, replaced before. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my back is- You're gosh, getting old like yeah. me. <laughs> Let me get in the boat real quick and show them some of the stuff we're looking at so they know what you're talking about. So these are obviously the gas tanks. <laughs> yeah. There's three of them. Saddle tank, center tank, saddle tank. This is one of my storages where the center console goes. The problem was, this tank, right? So no, this tank was, was the one that was replaced. Yeah. Um, when they replaced it, they actually used like a Great Stuff Home Depot phone. You actually have video of that? Yes, I have a video of it. We must have got this phone from Home Depot. So we got to tell you what went wrong to begin with. So the previous owner of this boat replaced one of the tanks. The bad part about that, it's just as easy to replace all three as it is one because to replace a tank, you have to take everything out of the boat. That's where the problem came into play. And we found some other issues as we pulled up the floor, there was a little bit of rot, which ultimately didn't help getting the console back up because we had some delamination issues trying to pull that up. Furthermore, we found that the bonding system they literally just, <laughs> they stripped the wire, tucked it in the hose, and then slammed the fill back on. So they didn't bond both of the, both of the fill necks. Uh, so that was an issue. Um, we did find pinholes in the center tank that was never touched, that was original. Um, so, you know, you're not at a total loss there pulling this thing up just because of what happened. I mean, obviously, you know, you had, you had further damage in there. Why they didn't go ahead and replace all three when you were that far, I have no idea. Just um, terrible. It is what it is at this point, but um, you know, it, uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but we're going to get her back together and it'll be better than ever and you won't have to worry about it ever again. Folks, look at that. Utter chaos. <laughs> now you do this a lot with these contenders. Yeah, we do this year round. I mean, we probably do 20 to 30 of them a year uh, on top of major refits as well. Man. So we, we stayed really busy with it. Yeah, so that's another contender right there that he's actually doing the same thing to. Actually, here's a good, you can see he only has the tanks out. He hasn't put the new tanks in. So they got to take the old tanks out, dig all that foam out, get it ready for the new tanks to go back in. And then they got to rewire it all on top of that. It's a job. It's certainly a job. Man. Get people that call us all the time and they're like, you know, we'll handle it. And then after they handle it, they're like, I never want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I had a couple people leave a comment below actually calling me an idiot. They're like, that's not going to cost 25000 to fix. How many man hours will you have in this when you're done? You know, it's, it's, I, it's all different. I mean, sometimes we'll have anywhere between 150 to 250 hours, depending on the model, depending on, you know, other things that may be wrong additions, so on and so forth. But generally it's 150 to 200 hour job plus the cost of the tanks how much did the tanks cost so your tanks were actually more because on this particular model anything over 102 inches has to be seen together um so yours were about a thousand dollars over over what it should have costed for say a 31 contender when you have uh you know a 31 open the older models yeah. that have a 300 gallon you know fuel capacity how much does this one hold? Uh, so yours, I believe, is just shy of 300. I think it's like uh, 298, I wanna say. Huh. Yeah, I wanna say it's like, it's, it's factory capacity, but you lose just a slight bit on it because we make the tanks thicker. So they're eighth inch from factory, 
and we make them 3 sixteenths. Jeez, so you lose a, a tiny amount of volume, but you get better durability on the tank. So what is the future going to hold? You're going to put the deck back on? Yeah, so... Well, you still got to tar the top of the tank. Yeah, so where you see the tape line there, we're going to waterproof the edges, pull that up. Obviously, we still have the plumbing to do. Everything gets double clamped. All your new bonding wires, as you can see, are all you know, getting done as we speak. Um, after all that's said and done, uh, from there, we'll basically you know, glue all the pieces back in, core bond those, mill the finish, lay our glass, ferret out, and then we'll be on the non-skid. So non-skid, what he's talking about is this stuff right here, which keeps you from slipping. And mine's obviously old and wore out, so he's gonna redo the whole inside of the boat. And no, the outside doesn't look too bad. The outside's not bad shape. Yeah, we're so we're just gonna do the inside. On the inside for sure. yeah. yeah. Holy mackerel. We'll get rid of all the dirtiness and make it look brand new. That's the craziest part about this. When he's done, this boat will literally look brand new. Right now, it looks like a disaster, but when he's done, brand new. Well, that actually hurt really bad. So I had to spend about 20 minutes with him there going over some certain things that I need done in the boat. Little extras that I wanted to add in. I think my grand total is going to be about $31,000. Yep. 31. That's with a three and a one. $31,000 for a fishing boat on top of what I've already spent. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder what what makes us spend all this money to go fishing. But for me, it's also about YouTube. You guys gotta realize that this is all I do for a living is YouTube. So I have the 31 Contender, I have the Pro Drive, and I have the Blackjack. And a lot of people wonder what it takes to make it in the YouTube world. Well, if you do a lot of studies on fishing channels and hunting channels, if you just fish, you're not gonna have a huge following. If you just hunt, you're not gonna have a huge following. But if you combine fishing, traveling, and hunting, and a bunch of cooking, and a bunch of other random stuff, then you can do it. But with that being said, it costs a lot of money to have boats and hunting leases and different types of boats to do different types of videos. And one thing I pride myself on is I try to do as many videos as I can on my own boat so you're getting that like sincere video, a video that I put all my blood, sweat, and tears in. And I think I do a good job at that. A lot of people have this misinterpretation of YouTubers. They think we're all just rich and we make all this money. I can enlighten you on how we make our money. So like this video right now when you're watching it, at most it'll make is maybe 800 to a thousand dollars. And that's not very much, especially when you're only doing five to six videos a month. But when you tally up all your videos, I think I have, God, I don't even know how many I have. I'll write it on the screen right here. Once you start doing a lot of videos on YouTube, our videos are like a library. They all make a little bit of money each day. Some might make 50 cents, some might make $300, some might make $1,000. But when you add them all up each day, that's how we make our money. And it takes a lot of work to make that many videos, I can assure you. With breakdowns and kids to feed and kids to take care of and cameras like I keep touching to see myself videoing myself on. It's a lot, folks but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I hope you liked this video. It was just an update on my boat. Helix Sleeps, thanks for sponsoring this video because they help me pay my bills. Right now though, it's ending. That's it, no cooking, nothing else. You just got to see the boat, a mattress, and a new turkey gun. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, but like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.